people walk a labyrinth, they experience one of its most perplexing mysteries. Thousands of people report that when used as a tool, labyrinths seem to have an ability to expand our spirit, focus our mind, and improve our health and sense of well-being. And what we discovered every time that we were dowsing someone before and after walking a labyrinth was that their energy field around their body was expanding. And it was going from where it normally is to two or three times larger. They all come back and say, I felt centered and balanced, more myself. And I listen to that and I say, oh, what's going on here is they're becoming whole. They're becoming a bigger person. They're, in, they're expanding into their larger self, which would be the soul. I feel a buoyancy and an exhilaration and a, definitely a lightness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I could feel it happening in, at various places. There are various places in there that I, I could feel the energy kept building. That's the distance from me to you where your aura has expanded to. What is that, 40 feet? More, more 50 feet. Really? Yeah, it's wonderful. Most people are fooled by the form and shape of things. And one of the illusions in this world is that we are a bunch of individuals just walking around and that we stop right here, somewhere, somewhere here. And in fact, we go much further. We have an energy body, we have auras, we have a spirit and so forth. And I think what the labyrinth shows is that not only do we have that, but that there are certain things that we can do to enhance that. And one of the things is to be balanced. And what the labyrinth really does for people is to put us back into balance. And in this culture, in this society especially, we get really imbalanced. We, we put so much time and effort into, into work, and into certain parts of our lives, and, and, and tend to, to overdo that side and, and don't do too much of, an, uh, of something else. But the labyrinth, because it has an equal number of turns and because of the way it's designed and the way we walk it, it restores a certain amount of balance to us and that balance increases our energy and is expressed in our auras. So I think that the, the labyrinth shows us that in our natural state we are much more than we might think that we normally are. As an artist and a labyrinth builder, I've had hundreds of experiences and stories told to me about the power of the labyrinth and the significant changes it makes in people's lives and also its healing aspects. I, I'd like to tell you about a story of a child who, well actually a 13-year-old boy who helped me build a labyrinth with a class of students and this child had never spoken a full sentence in his life. After walking the labyrinth, helping me build it, walking it once in a blessing of the labyrinth, he walked toward uh, lunch and he yelled out, I wish I could come back after lunch, but I have health class. So something shifted in his ability to speak. I don't know what that magic is or how that mystery works, but that he was able to speak a full sentence meant that something shifted in his thinking ability, in the way he was balanced. Just before coming to this conference, I received a letter from a woman that I built the labyrinth for a number of months ago and a minister and his wife came to walk the labyrinth and he was blind and he had Parkinson's. And as they walked in, she held him up and literally eased him through the labyrinth. By the time he was walking back out with her, they were simply holding hands. So again, there's that shift in the body's ability to heal itself when it's in an environment of healing. I'm an art therapist and a nurse. I created the labyrinth in my garden uh, for myself. But what I found out, it attracted many people. Hundreds of people have come to walk the labyrinth as groups, uh, as part of ritual. Um, people come to problem solve. I have a lot of meetings at my house now that people don't want to meet anywhere else because they find the labyrinth so um, uh, useful and even uh, like board meetings. We go walk it, we come back, and the answers of, to the issues, the problems that we're facing are real authentic and available. Not too long ago, someone called me on the phone, and they said that they, after they learned how to draw the labyrinth, they did it every time before they went to sleep at night, and they had a sleeping disorder, 
and now they're able to go to sleep. Another woman came um, with a group of her uh, loved ones and family, her husband um, and friends, and they did a healing ceremony for her because she was going to have a mastectomy. And she went in the center of the labyrinth, and I received a beautiful card from her later thanking. And her surgery went well. She's doing quite well. And, and this was one of the tools she used. One of the powerful experiences I had with the labyrinth was last year at the first labyrinth conference. We walked that seven path labyrinth, which was outdoors on a water dome, for, for the five days of the conference. And we would douse our energy fields at different times as the days passed. And um, by the end, our energy field had expanded to where we were almost like a football field away from one another to, to read it on the dowsing rods. And so I thought that was really a, a real tangible way of showing the expansion of energy. But what I was really amazed by when I got home is that um, I found that it really shifted time. I felt like it expanded time for me for about two weeks. And that um, as a body worker, as a massage therapist, and working in hour increments, I had a really hard time tracking time by the clock but I found myself doing much slower, more methodical work and consistently ending up with more time to do additional work in each session. Because we have so much information coming at us at such a fast rate that it's hard for our nervous system with the World Wide Web and everything else, that everything is changing so fast that our nervous systems are having a hard time keeping up with what is going on. And for many reasons, I believe that the labyrinth is really going to help keep us in a more balanced state. It's going to help us um, take in this information in, in, in a way that our nervous systems can handle it and keep us in a more um, peaceful state. And that I think it also really um, expands our energy and our thought as we walk the labyrinth and also um, collects the collective consciousness that it, it, um, that it brings us together on the level of the collective consciousness. I started out walking it alone and actually have started walking it with um, two other women from my, um, my class and we're working on our dissertations. And we go to the labyrinth wherever we're stuck and with intent and respect for the sacred space, we take our questions and walk the labyrinth. Afterwards, we will spend time together sharing what we have come up with, what's been revealed to us and it not only has helped move us out of stuck places in our dissertation process, but it's actually um, deepened our dissertation process. One of the places, for example, in which people that uh, have walked labyrinths that I've installed have had a particularly effective uh, interaction is with grieving. I've had, on more than one occasion, someone who said that they're grieving the loss or the illness of a loved one walked the labyrinth and it relieved their, their grieving and it made them feel better and it gave them some kind of insight and some kind of uh, perspective on it all. So in hospitals, for example, or in prisons, or in places where people are in extreme personal anguish, I think that labyrinths would offer a, a, a source of relief at no cost. Labyrinths can be miraculous and wonderful tools for transformation no matter how they are used. In August of 95, uh, I had been invited to take the labyrinth to a conference on creativity in St. Petersburg, and I went with my partner, Elaine Foster, and we were able to present the labyrinth at a workshop one morning. It was the first time the Russian people had experienced it. And what was so wonderful was the fact that although we had translators for the lecture part, the experience of walking the labyrinth is so fundamental that it needs no translation. So even people who came later in the week, in the mornings, when we had it open before the opening of the conference schedule, people could come as a meditation and walk before breakfast and had no introduction at all. They would just get it. It was absolutely wonderful. It really kinesthetically got through. There was no need for language. It was an extra extraordinary experience. What took place was um, the labyrinth provided a real uh, centering and containing place for the people who have been so repressed and silenced in not only to live their spirituality, but to talk about it. And it was a very safe place. 
And so it provided a way for actual, a lot of releasing, a lot of crying, a lot of sharing that I don't believe would have taken place without it. 